In Salt Lake City, Utah, scientists managed this improbable feat. Their big advantage lay in the surrounding population. Salt Lake City is home to the Mormon Church. The Mormons believe that if you become a Mormon, so can your ancestors. As each ancestral soul has the chance to be baptized after death, the dead must be accurately identified. Every Mormon family has a record of its genealogy here in the Family History Library, the largest of its kind anywhere in the world. The community is one that is traditionally tight-knit and marries within itself, often producing very large families. For the geneticist, this is a potential gold mine of information that can be used to track down genetic disorders. Dr. Donna Shattuck was part of the breast cancer search. The idea that there's a single gene responsible for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer comes from the fact that there are families in which there's genetic clusters of the disease. So this is an example of a Utah pedigree in which a disease is segregating in multiple generations. And you can see that the grandfather here is affected with, in this case, prostate cancer. So the, all the affected are males here. The black squares are the affected individuals. As you scan this picture, you'll notice that the black squares, the affected individuals, have the green chromosome. And so then we look for the smallest piece of the green chromosome that goes into an affected individual. And that's how we know where to start looking for the gene. This is how they track down the breast cancer gene. With a short stretch of chromosome to focus on, they compared that piece with the same stretch from the general population. They found a mutation, an area where the DNA was damaged. The affected gene is enormously important as it acts as a tumor suppressor. But the mutation disables it completely, allowing the cancer to grow unchecked. The mutation was named BRCA1, breast cancer gene 1. Seen here as a single error in a gene nearly 8,000 letters long. It's a G, but it should be a T. Finding BRCA1 was a major milestone in predictive medicine. Because from this, they were able to make the world's first cancer gene test. Myriad process up to 100 BRCA gene tests every day. Each one is potentially saving a life. The power of the genetic test is not only to say these genes are involved, but to tell the individuals in a family whether they have the specific individual risk. That's the power of the gene test. And those are the people that you give the interventions to. Predictive medicine is exactly that, assessing the risk and, and taking steps to reduce the risk of, of future disease for individuals. BRCA1 is now thought to be a culprit in nearly 10% of all breast cancer cases. Having it raises a person's chances of getting breast cancer from 5 to 85%. For many adult women, the test for BRCA1 is an early warning system. Two years after her operation, Wendy Watson was offered the chance to find out if she carried BRCA1. She tested positive. Peak 107, the 50-50 music mix of yesterday and today. This is Sean and Becky at breakfast. It makes no difference to Wendy, no, but it does affect her daughter. We have missed the news that the calendar is in. Every single penny of this goes towards uh, the Genesis appeal, which is to help prevent... Becky knows she has a 50-50 chance of having inherited the BRCA1 gene. Sponsors and everything helping us out. I'm only 21 at the moment, and uh, the genetic test has been available to me since I was 18, which I will definitely take. But uh, breast cancer is, uh, in, in our family doesn't strike till about 35, late, uh, early 40s. So I'm in no big rush to, uh, to worry about it. If you do want your calendar, then, uh, you know, come down and get some. Get them in at the moment, the only preventative measure that's open to me is to have a double mastectomy. But in 10 to 15 years... Who knows what they'll have developed. I mean, I have every faith in things that they'll develop something. Um, but if not, then the double mistake to me is definitely an option. 
In Discovery's poll, the vast majority of people in all countries would choose to be tested if there was a history of genetic disease in their family. If I knew that someone in my family was diagnosed with something that could be determined genetic from some kind of genetic testing, um, and it's something that if treated early or caught early, you know, would help, you know, would benefit the treatment and that sort of thing, I would be 100% for it, 150%. It seems to me that if you could determine ahead of time that someone in your genetic line, your parents, grandparents, had a propensity for a particular disease that you should be tested for it if it could be determined so that you'd know ahead of time and be prepared for whatever the future would hold. If you all could find a cure for it by stopping it in the early stages, I would surely go for that, yeah. Gene tests seem to be the great hope of predictive medicine. But at the moment it's only possible to test for single gene disorders like BRCA1. And that simple test took six years to produce. It's now realized that most of the major disorders like heart disease, Alzheimer's, most forms of cancer and diabetes involve a complex pattern of genes. As yet, no one knows how many. And no one knows what most of these genes do. Professor Steve Jones thinks we may need a reality check. There's a nasty sense that really what we've sequenced, what we think of as genes, may be something much more complicated than we thought. Maybe every one isn't just making one protein and doing one job. Maybe every one is doing dozens of different jobs. Each, each so-called gene may be a black box with dozens of little units hidden inside it, which are cut and spliced and arranged in a way that we don't understand. By the mid-1990s, Scientists realized that understanding complex genetic diseases meant understanding every single gene in the human body. But they had to find them first. Imagine all the DNA in your body stretched out like a road. Over a journey of a thousand miles, you would pass 50 base letters every inch. And just like the real landscape, much of that DNA landscape would look the same. Featureless, inactive, vast numbers of repeated letters, much of it seemingly doing nothing. It's estimated that only 3% of DNA is part of a functioning gene. Occasionally, there are areas that make something. These are the genes that are actually producing proteins. What the rest do, no one knows. A lot of it appears to be junk left behind from our evolutionary past. <laughs>